Hello and welcome to Stories Around the Fire. Tonight's guest is Lucky Yates, who is an actor, voice actor, and puppeteer best known for his character Dr. Krieger on the FX series Archer and his stint on Good Eats. He has nightly live streams of his puppetry, movie reviews, and even has a loyal following in his Sunday night church, the Church of the Holy Dodo, where he's affectionately known as Reverend Daddy or Reverend Uncle Lucky. So we're gonna add him right now. Started. Hi. Hello. How are you? I'm, I'm well. How are you? I'm great. Thank it's you so much. Very exciting. I know. I'm so excited. It's exciting being a guest on another show before. That, you know, I've oh. been doing shows almost every night for like eight months now. And so this is weird. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, I know. I've been, I think I've been there since the beginning. And I found it so very entertaining. And like, I don't know. It's been nice to connect with other people. Yeah, it's crazy. The little community that's popped up in the feed, it's bananas. Uh, yeah, pretty awesome. Definitely. Well, are you ready for me to ask you some uncomfortable questions? I'm just kidding. Oh, my God. No, oh, yeah, sure. I'll do it right on. My life's an open book. Go for it. <laughs> okay. So um, the first thing I wanted to ask was, how did you get into voice acting? Uh, I, it, it, it's, it was another gig, you know what I mean? Like when you're out there trying to make it as an actor, you take any gig you can. Uh, and I was doing radio, uh, already in town. Uh, and, and I got a radio gig from dad's garage. Most things have, have somehow come out of dad's garage, me working at dad's garage uh, and just doing, like I used to have a talk show uh, at dad's garage, like a late night talk show um, and live theater. It was, it was like a TV talk show, uh, but live theater. And this was like in the early 2000s, like right around the turn of the century. And uh, there were no, nobody had smartphones. There were no cameras with phones and all that stuff back then. So literally people could come on and just like cut loose. And the only people that saw them cut loose were the people there that night. And, you know, nobody was recording anything. There was no way to do it. Uh, so a lot of people cut loose and it got me a lot of gigs. Cause I just like was having, you know, trying to grab any local celebrity I could. So I ended up on radio and just honing skills that way. But also members of our company are artists, like uh, visual artists, and uh, at Dad's Garage and uh, back. Adult Swim is located here in Atlanta, and uh, you know buddies that were artists on Frisky Dingo. Uh, well, actually on Sea Lab Twenty Twenty One. Uh, you know the the company Seventy Thirty that eventually became Floyd County Productions, which does Archer. Uh, uh, they, they were doing C-Lab and that was a huge hit and then people from the, the improv company were working on the show and so they would have parties and we'd all go and so I hit it off with Matt and Adam and they'd come see me in other shows you know it's like you know it's just all trading off like work begets work uh, and luckily you know Dad's Garage is like the big sort of comedy improv especially for improv uh we're sort of the big dogs in town and always have been uh one of you know like two big dogs and so uh you know everybody comes through and, and just doing interesting shows was that a concise enough answer for you definitely <laughs> i tend definitely. to ramble in my answers i did a, like a radio tour yesterday and i used that was that a concise enough answer for you line in probably eight out of 10 interviews that I did yesterday morning, because I just ramble. I planned around your rambling, so that's wonderful. Right, yeah, I mean, you've seen my shows. I, <laughs> I can just talk. I'll just talk for a while. That's good. <laughs> uh, okay, so you said that there were um, visual artists at Dad's Garage. Well, you're a visual artist also, right? Well, yeah, I mean, if you're uh, talking about, like, puppets, yes. Yes. So tell us about your puppets. Uh, you know, and I make puppets just because, 
you know, they got to come from somewhere. And so if you want one to use, you have to make it. Uh, there's no, I mean, there are store-bought puppets, but they suck. You don't want to really use a store-bought puppet. Um, but yes, puppetry. It's my true love when it comes to art. Really? Yeah, yeah. It's the thing that uh, uh, really gets me the most. I love doing it. I love it. Uh, it it's, uh, I, it, I am coming to learn. I mean, I was diagnosed uh, with ADHD a couple few years ago, uh, and I've had it my entire life. Um, but I'm now just really realizing all the, the things that it does. And puppetry is the one, uh, it like really focuses me like no other thing, only because you got to take like an entire performance and you'll put it in here, right? I mean, you're going to like make the, you're going to do the voice, but still it's like everything goes into this. Uh, and so having, having that focus and then being able to perform, uh, it's like a perfect, for me, it's like this perfect, uh, uh, yeah, I, everything's in harmony for me to like express myself artistically. Uh, it's great. I love that. Plus, I love plus it's really great. You bring a puppet out on stage and, and uh, it becomes a part of the show. And people will then believe anything. Like they go, people go right into it. They will leap right there with you, and then all bets are off. Like uh, the people will suspend their disbelief across the board as soon as like a puppet character shows up and starts talking. It's weird. That's awesome. Yeah, you can get away with shit with a puppet that you could never get away with, uh, like as a just a person performer. Uh, right. They can be filthy. They can be fucking honest. They can do all that shit. Uh, and uh, that if a person would do it, they would be so hated. But if a puppet's doing some reason, people will buy it. They're just like, oh, this is great. The puppet is so awful. <laughs> it's like, yeah, he sure is. He's a real rascal. <laughs> That's great. That's yeah. awesome. That's a really good, like, you know, way to, like you were saying, like, express some of the things that you know, dirty art, you know. Yeah, uh, yeah, it really is. If a puppet does it, it's okay. It yeah. yeah. Um, so you got a lot of things going on right now. Uh, what does your ideal Lucky Yates empire look like? What do you mean by empire? What does that mean? All of the things you want out of... <laughs> the the whole universe. <laughs> Jesus Christ! Uh, oh my! Whoa! God, that's a huge question. Uh, what it do is. I want out of the whole universe? Okay, let's say professionally. Let's go professionally. Okay, all right. Like what? Yeah, what? What is my dream? Like what is yeah. my ultimate dream? You know, it's weird. Is that like I'm kind of I've been living like this was kind of the goal the whole time and I've been doing it for like 11 years now uh is that like you know ultimately I wanted to be a cartoon character uh and you know something that was hilarious and weird uh and and like I I got it and I've been making my living doing it uh and it, it's amazing uh and so that being said uh of course, I would love to have some sort of a, a TV puppet show. Uh, uh, that, that's not Muppets. Um, people, uh, puppetry is a very vast art form. It's one of the oldest uh, performance art forms. And uh, it is, uh, it's really, the, there's so many styles of puppetry out there in the world. And most people in this country when you say puppet, they immediately think of a Muppet uh, just because that's what we're raised with, right? And that's really just like almost the only dog and anything else that's on TV is always trying to imitate that. Uh, and so there's just different styles and different types of puppets and all that kind of shit. And so, yeah, bringing uh, some, some of that uh, to the world through the medium of television or whatever television is becoming during this great change uh yeah that that's 
that's been the goal since I discovered puppetry, I guess. And yeah. started getting into video puppetry because I love doing that. Right. Are you doing, you're doing like a YouTube for that, right? Uh, we, I, we were, me and my buddy Jason, we were doing it, but then his real job, there's a puppet center here in Atlanta. It's the Center for Puppetry Arts. Uh, it's like the biggest theater slash, uh, it's got a museum, uh, it's got classrooms. It's the biggest institution devoted to puppetry in the country. Um, and Jason's like the head puppet builder over there. And even though they're closed, they're doing, they're putting things together for like holiday shows and all that stuff. So his real job yanked him away from me. Uh, yeah, what are you gonna do? Like, you know, people gotta earn a living, man. Uh, and so my job's just really easy. It doesn't take a lot of time. Um, so yeah, we'll get back to Poop and Burst when we can get back to Poop and Burst. He really wants to be doing it. Uh, you know, and I'm always sending him dumb ideas for things. And he's like, yeah, I know. I want to do all of this, but I can't right now. So what are you going to do? It's... I think Poop and Verse is a wonderfully weird show. Um... <laughs> yeah, thanks. It was going to, he and I were going to do it as a live show at the Center for Public Arts this summer. Uh, it, Poop and Verse was a live show. And uh, <laughs> then the pandemic hit in March. And then, you know, it was the first thing to go from the center uh, for puppetry arts. And we were just like, screw it. Let's just start doing something online with it. Uh, and yeah, and initially it was just Puppet Lucky Eight's dancing for an hour. <laughs> the polka music. Yes, it got weird. <laughs> yeah, it was great. Got weird right away. It was great. That's awesome. So, um, as far as your voice acting with Archer, uh, Dr. Krieger, yeah. um, how has your job been affected by the pandemic? Have you guys still been able to yeah. Like, go? Yeah, we finished. No, we haven't really been. We got slowed down. Like, the reason we launched in September as opposed to May this year uh, is because it got slowed down. Uh, when the pandemic hit and then everybody had to go into lockdown, the studio, they couldn't meet at the studio anymore. So everybody had to go get to set their shit up at their house. And then the, all the artists were all working from home. And so it just slowed production down because they're not all together. Um, and so it just, but we recorded the final episode after the p pandemic hit of season 11 and we just recorded episodes from season 12 last week. So, like, we had sort of the normal amount of time off we would have in between seasons. Like, it really hasn't affected me at all. Uh, or wow. Archer. Like, you know, we got picked up. We're still going. We're recording episodes. Uh, so, yeah. Everything's great. Everything's great in cartoon land. Good. <laughs> Good. Congrats on that. I think Thanks. about 12 it's 12, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, season 12. It's not long. <laughs> so if you weren't doing voice acting or puppetry, what would you be doing? Uh, I, I, do, do you want, like, are we taking acting out of it altogether? Yeah. Is, yeah. The, like the art of theater doesn't exist? Right, right. Uh, I would probably be making pizzas at a pizza place. That's like my dream, like just regular job. I'm just gonna go. I love working in a kitchen, uh, and uh, it's just being able to like, yeah, make pizza pies all day seems pretty cool to me. It is. It does seem cool. Yeah. You might get bored though. Like, what if you? I don't know. Bored? You know. You've got buddies to talk to. I was never bored when I worked in the kitchen before. Like, you're usually in the weeds. And when you're not in the weeds, there's cleaning to do. And you got to, you know, you're always doing something. It's very busy work working in a kitchen. Uh, yeah, I'm sure in a pizza place, you know, dough has to constantly be made. You're <laughs> constantly having to slice pepperoni or do it. You know, I don't want to work in some dominoes. I want to work in a real joint making real pies. Uh, no disrespect to any Domino's franchisees out there in the world, 
<laughs> Praise Gladys. Um, yeah, I, you know, I, but I want to work like at a regular, uh, like a nice pizza joint where you got to use a paddle and you're not putting things on a conveyor belt. I could go off on pizza joints all night long. I feel like you've thought this through. How long? I really has... haven't. I'm. Just, it's like my show. I'm just. I'm just talking. <laughs> this is how it works. All right. Well, I have a couple more questions, and then I'm going to ask you for a story. So be thinking about that. Oh my god! I have to tell a story. Oh great. All right. Um, okay. So what do you do for fun? <laughs> I do, I do it all day long. I ride my bike. I, uh, yeah, I hang out with my dog, uh, and I ride my bike. And I write dumb show ideas in sketchbooks. Uh, mm -hmm. Like, you know, I, that, that, like I sit outside and I write in sketchbooks or whatever. And I think of idiot, I got notebooks and notebooks full of idiotic show ideas. Uh, that will never see the light of day. Uh, but it's what? usually pretty hilarious to go back and look at them because there's a lot of weird crap in there. And there, it's all puppet shows. So you many puppet shows. All together. Huh? Magnum opus. Put them all together. <laughs> oh, my God. Like, print it? Who would want to see it? What a terrible <laughs> book that would be. I would sell, like, eight yeah. copies. <laughs> I think the ketchup crew would buy it for sure. Yeah, I know. Now I'm going to sell like eight copies. <laughs> exactly. Oh, well, eight is better than none. <laughs> Not if there's a publishing house breathing down my neck. <laughs> you better start that piece so of play. Sell 15,000 copies or whatever their order was. <laughs> oh, okay. I have a good question for you. I feel like it's good. You may hate it. We'll try. Okay. Yeah, See right you. Would definitely buy it. See, you're already getting pre-orders. <laughs> um, what is your most useless talent? <laughs> I broke you. I don't have a lot of talents is the thing. I do like a couple of things well, and then that's about it. So my most useless talent, uh, I, I can play. I can play the jaw harp. You know those boingy things. Yeah, yes, I, can I, play, I can play one of those pretty well. Uh, wow! It never really comes in handy. So I guess you could say that's pretty useless. I've got one, there's one in my place somewhere, but I have no idea where it, like I, it would probably be an hour long search before I. If, if you it's... find it. Huh? If you find it in the future, will you come back and play it? <laughs> yeah, I mean, I have a couple of ideas where it might be, but it's doubtful, uh, but yeah, sure. Uh, it, it, you know, you don't get much more than twangs and weird, breathy twangs it's uh, like it's not a very versatile instrument at all but it's the only musical instrument i can play unicycle someone asked do you unicycle uh i cannot unicycle at all no not at all i that's not my bag that seems like a lot of work i'd rather just ride a bike like a unicycle just seems like i can never relax <laughs> Nothing. I there's at no point. And can I relax here? Got to be on it at all times. And not that you're not on it at all times on a bike, but you can coast for a while. You can't coast on a unicycle. You have to constantly be pedaling. Yes. Too much core activation. Definitely. Yeah. yeah fuck that. <laughs> what is the strangest thing that you've ever done for money? Oh, man. Oh, <laughs> Jesus. Uh, you know, when in the first like year or so, when I moved to Atlanta, a buddy and me, another buddy from Detroit, we got jobs 
for like some organization that would send like entertainers to to kids parties and stuff. And so me and my buddy, a fellow punk from Detroit, were dressed in like the world's shittiest Ninja Turtles costumes. And we would go to parties where kids were expecting the Ninja Turtles <laughs> and they would get us. And <laughs> it like punched in the nuts, like just the worst. So like essentially working for a company that does like the yeah, birthday party entertainment. That is they and you could never, you couldn't say you were a ninja turtle. You always had to say you were like, yeah, I'm not a, you know, I'm just a fighter turtle. Uh, oh, so you know what I mean? God. They sent out a lot of like Disney princesses, but they weren't, they weren't allowed to say I'm Snow White when they're in a Snow White costume. You know what I mean? Like terrible. Uh, so yeah, just pretty like entertainment gigs are usually pretty horrible. <laughs> So you were a knockoff Ninja Turtle. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. I did not yeah. know that. Several times. <laughs> for years. No, I'm just kidding. No, no. Yeah, like, I feel like we did it for about a, a summer and we were like, screw this, man. This is yeah. the first. Yeah. yeah, definitely. That sounds pretty terrible. Yeah, it was awful. <laughs> Where is you, know, you don't want to be there. You know, there were other actresses, like really good actresses doing it too. That like, you know, they're playing princesses and really doing like working so hard. And it's just like, but you're not allowed to say that you are who you are. You know, I'm not Cinderella, I'm anything but. And then like, yeah, just to be like shitty Ninja Turtles that don't look right and the mask colors off. Like you immediately anger kids. And it was in the 90s. So Ninja Turtles were huge. And like when you go and you are an immediate disappointment to kids, kids are brutal. <laughs> and so this is probably also going into my story. Uh, you know, they're just like they're the worst. And so they will let you have it immediately if they if they see right through your bullshit. Uh, and we were bullshit. We worked for a bullshit organization. Wow. I, haven't visited this thought since the days <laughs> I did it. I've really got a lot to say. Well, it's a heavy thing, you know? <laughs> yeah, it really is. It's like therapy. Don't charge. <laughs> charge That's... Blue Cross. Right, right. Um, what is the most, where is the most dangerous place that you've ever been? I was in uh, Kiev in the Ukraine two weeks before Chernobyl melted down and Kiev got hit with uh, radioactive winds pretty heavy. Uh, it was in an 86. Uh, I was I was with a, a, a church group, uh, a, a, like a real groovy, for a while, me and my folks belonged to like a real groovy, non-denominational, I'm okay, you're okay. Really more uh, uh, self-help seminars than church. Uh, but, uh, there was like a, it was a national, it's still around, uh, it's a national organization and they had a really strong youth group, uh, in this organization. And I was a teenager, you know, I was like already 17 or something like that, but I went, uh, to the, it was still the Soviet Union. We went to the Soviet Union, uh, during this time and toured of several things, uh, and places. And, uh, we, uh, we were in Kiev, like right before Chernobyl blew up. Uh, other than that, I, I, oh, there was a, it's a fancy place now, but it was abandoned for decades here in Atlanta. It was called the, uh, uh, oh man, it's not the Claremont. Is it the Claremont? No, it's not the Claremont Hotel. I can't remember what it's called now. Anyway, an old rundown hotel, like right in Midtown. And this place had been abandoned for years, like a good... This is like a 10-story little hotel, maybe 8 to 10 stories. Uh, and me and a couple of theater buddies, one of, one of my friends not, said, I know how to get in that place. And the three of us one night uh, just went down there with, like, 
flashlights. This is also in the 90s. Uh, went and broke in. We had to like climb up a building next door, walk a plank across to like this weird rooftop on the hotel. And there was a window that he knew would open. And then we went into these like decades abandoned uh, eight story hotel and running around on all the floors, like three people. And everywhere we went, there were signs that, and this was at night, uh, there were signs that people were living in there. There were clearly homeless people living in there like crazy. And a lot of Midtown Atlanta used to be, uh, there used to be like so many uh, uh, transvestite hookers, like dudes dressed as women uh, uh, that were hooking. And uh, a lot of them clearly were working or living out of this place we were running around. Um, ran around there. I was terrified the entire time because it was dark. There was a pitch black except for us and our flashlights. And if anybody caught us and didn't want us in there, they could have murdered us and nobody would have ever known what had happened to us. Like, nobody knew where the... Down in the basement, it was flooded out. It was fucking like there could have been monsters. It was crazy. Uh, and we never saw another person and it was really terrifying. Anyway, that, that probably wasn't smart. No, I don't think it was. But, but you know, what are you going to do? Right. It was fun. <laughs> I'm still talking about it. <laughs> what is the, where is the most beautiful place you've ever been? Uh, Banff uh, in uh, Canada. Uh, oh, man. If you've never been to Banff, I haven't, uh, but I've it's all really incredible. Uh, it's just beautiful, beautiful mountain, uh, Canadian mountains. Uh, yeah, really gorgeous place. Uh, you know, elk wandering around and shit, like really cool. Sounds nice, looks nice, definitely want to go. Yeah. I don't think they're still not accepting us, right? Uh, Joe Labbitt, who is here watching it, was there with me. Look at oh. that. How do you like that? Joe Labbitt, he can verify musical improviser Joel Abbott is here. Yeah, hey, welcome. Yeah, I'm, point, I'm pointing down at uh, his name in the feed. Uh, yeah, that's definitely the prettiest place I've ever been. Okay, what's I've been to Hawaii, too, and it's pretty, but man, like, very quickly, like, you, you are constantly reminded that you're on a little island in the middle of a vast ocean and uh it drove me buggy pretty quickly uh there's a thing called rock fever that people get uh like especially people that uh move to hawaii uh they they go bonkers because you are never not reminded that you are on a little island in the like you can't drive you know every 15 minutes you're faced with the vast ocean again uh yeah it's crazy so it's really pretty there, but also, man, I felt trapped on an island. Yeah, I imagine. Ugh. But I still would like to. I, I want to feel trapped on an island, so I'm totally going to try to check Oh, yeah, out. right on. Yeah, yeah, if that's your scene. If, yeah, if looking at nothing but ocean is your scene, man, Hawaii is the place for you. <laughs> okay, what's something strange or unusual that pisses you off? Oh my God, I, everything pisses me off, like everything. What? So what's strange or unusual that pisses me off? Yeah. Man, oh, that's a, that's a, uh, yeah, that's going to take me a minute to think of something. Uh, I'm assuming like something mundane. Right? Is that what we're talking about? Strange and unusual? Something that we I wouldn't expect to piss me off? Pisses yeah. me off? I mean, pretty mm -hmm. much everything people do pisses me off. So, like, I don't even know where to go with it. Uh, uh, tell you what pisses me off about myself. I have an inability to pick uh, the good checkout line. I will always get in the line uh, that ends up being uh, something has to be done. <laughs> Either a price check has to go down or uh, the, the, the computer will crash or 
I, I like I have a line curse. Oh. So this is not at all an answer to your question. Uh, <laughs> this is a diversion because I can't <laughs> think of anything weird that pisses me off. I mean, I guess saying like most just, things. Just the off. normal stuff. <laughs> the, yeah. People being inconsiderate. Yeah, that sucks. Yeah. <laughs> What's something strange or unusual that makes you happy? Uh, I really like cute things a lot. Cute? Uh, cute, yeah. I think cute is Aww. great. Uh, yeah, uh, I dig cute. The cute aesthetic. Uh, uh, I I am not hardcore, but I, 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 I'm like almost a weeb. Do you know what a weeb is? Somebody like a, a, a Japanophile. Like I like I love things from Japan, uh, and they have a lot of adorable little weird characters that I love. They do. Uh, yeah, weird shit like that. You know, weird weird Japanese characters make me happy. <laughs> I think that's the first time I've I watched heard that. the movie House, 1977's House, last night. And I mean, I haven't seen that thing in years and years, and I forgot what a trip it is. And I was incredibly happy the entire time I was watching it. It really is like an acid trip uh, put on film and that claims it's a horror a horror movie. It's bonkers, but it's bonkers in the best Japanese way. Like it's absolutely nuts from the get go. It's just crazy filmmaking. Uh, really great. What is it on? Uh, I watched it on HBO Max, and I think it's probably also on the Criterion channel, if anybody has that streaming service. Uh, it, you can probably watch it on YouTube, probably, if you look hard probably. enough. It's a Japanese film called House. Very famous. I'll check it out. What's something that you wish you had known when you were younger? Something that I wish I had... Wait, what was the question? Something you wish you'd known uh, when you were... Wish, that I know now that I wish I'd known when I was younger? Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Where do I begin? All <laughs> of it. Uh, yeah. Uh, hey, like, wear condoms. <laughs> You know, you get a couple of oopsies in there, and uh, you think when you learn that the stove is hot. Anyway, it's all okay. You got, you got random children somewhere? No, no, thank God. <laughs> what um, advice would you give to someone starting out in, trying to start out in, like, the theater or voice in acting? acting? Uh, yeah. yeah. First of all, uh, yeah. The, here's the biggest piece of advice I'm going to give to anybody who wants to get into voice acting. Uh, you got to broaden your horizons, man. Like, get, good luck to you if that's you're just going to try to uh, just go for one aspect of acting, because acting jobs in general are few and far between. If you try to start getting into niche stuff, like I can't even get another voice acting job. I audition for stuff all the time. I can't get another, you know what I mean? If I get other jobs, it's because, like, buddies will hook me up or whatever. Like, uh, you know, I, even though I've been on a show for 11 years, and, yeah, like, I audition like the rest of them, and I still don't get hired. So, you know, because somebody else that's bigger than me also wants to do voice work uh, because, you know, they're not doing enough film work. Uh, so not only are you competing with other brilliant, like, voice actors and all that kind of stuff, uh, you're also competing with genuine stars who just want to do it because it's easy money for them, you know? Um, so, you know, take every job you can. Uh, if you have a true love, do it be... At, you should go into acting because you love 
acting, not because you want to be famous. There are a zillion other ways to be famous uh, in the year 2020. Uh, being in TV or the movies uh, doesn't need to be one anyway. You know, TV and the movies seem to be dying. Like, who, who knows what if we're ever going to go to the cinema again. Uh, mm -hmm. And, you know, as far as, like, networks and, you know, stuff that, like, commercial television, uh, it, everything's streaming. Everything's streaming, 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 streaming. So, like, well, it's a great change anyway. Like, don't get into, you know, act. Film act on YouTube. Make movies. Right. Just make, yeah, so make your own stuff. And you if you have... suck, if you suck, know when to get out of the game. Oh, that's another one too. Uh, a lot of people really will hang in there uh, just because they're convinced, man, it's going to happen at some point, uh, and they never get anything. You know what I mean? They're not a part of anything anywhere, but they're still at all the things and trying to and just gumming up the works. And it's like you know, I mean. Once you start getting around anyway, there's enough people that are going to tell you in the business that you suck anyway. Uh, that like, yeah, no, just just be aware that like if if it's not working, if it's really not your thing, if it's the thing you shouldn't be doing, then don't try to do it. That makes sense. It, it, um, it, like it's a lot of people's goals, but I feel like it's the goals for all the wrong reasons. Yeah. I want to be in TV. I want to be a voice actor because I like watching cartoons. Like, uh, it's not a good reason. Right. Right. Well, dang. No, I'm just kidding. No, um, I mean, I... you know, yeah. Do it because you love acting and you want to yeah. act. No. <laughs> uh, I see that you had a comment that said, why don't you do stand-up? And I wanted to ask you why, or not why, but have you, like, ever auditioned or are you interested in, like, doing like video game voices because I think you would be like really rad as like a video game voice. Yeah, I, 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 I sure. And I, you know, I, again, I audition for video games every now and again. Uh, but again, and that's when dudes that are, have been in voiceover like hardcore for a, a million years. So, like those people really do still exist. Um, and, video games uh, is where they en have ended up a lot instead of being on TV and, you know, all big shows and stuff like that, which used to be all just voice actors, right? It was so rare that somebody, an actual TV or movie star would do a, like a cartoon voice. Like what? Why would they ever lower themselves? You know, it was voice actors that would do that stuff. Wow. Um, so all the voice actors and people that have been in the business for a zillion years, like, uh, uh, video games are a huge place uh, for them to go. Um, that being said, like, it's uh, all of, like who I know and all that kind of stuff. Like my buddy, Mark Mir, uh, he was Commander Shepard in all the Mass Effect video oh, game no, movies. Really? And yeah, and he's an improviser in uh, uh, Edmonton. Uh, and he's been on my night shows before. He's Boris, the boar puppet. Uh, who comes on my wrench show every once in a while. Anyway, uh, yeah, like, uh, you know, so, but he's friends with the people that do uh, the Mass Effect games. BioWare is located in Edmonton. And so they use a lot of local talent. He was on a game that hit, you know, it's just like I was on Archer, right? Uh, right. My buddies were doing a show uh, and, you know, they put me on some little goofy role uh, and then the show hit, and it turns out everybody loved my character. So, like, oh, okay, great. Uh, yeah, suddenly I was on a hit show. But, okay. yeah. That's awesome. It's always about who you know and what you know. I mean, That's I could. I, I could, yeah, it, it, I can't just go, hey, put me, somebody put me on a video game. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, yeah, you yeah. kind of have to know somebody to can get me onto a video game. Yeah. But you totally belong on one, in one. Well, thank um, you. I agree. I think I belong on all the things. Yes, definitely. All of them. Disney, Pixar, um, everything. Oh, man. I talk about movie stars. Like, there's no way. I'm nowhere near that universe. Oh, I don't know. God. 
He could be right. It looks like all A-listers they're using in those movies. Well, I mean, your voice is, you know, very your voice. and Yeah, you know. it's uniquely me. But, you know, I'm all right at being a little cult figure. Yeah, I, I imagine all that's right. pretty yeah. I don't want people to get sick of me. You know? No. Yeah. yeah. Having a niche audience is pretty cool. I bet. Yeah. So I'm going to ask you for a story, and then we can play a game if you don't want Okay. Mind. All right. Okay. I've told so many stories tonight. Now, what kind of story do you want? What am I telling here? Any kind. You can tell your favorite story that you wanted to, like, that you used to want to hear when you were a kid. Like, you're... Favorite like bedtime story? Oh, I'm can... telling like a story, story like a Goldilocks and the Three Bears story. Don't have to. You can tell anything. You can tell somebody else's story. You can tell something that happened to you. You can do a bit. You can <laughs> do whatever. Just any kind of story. Anything. I'm throwing a story out into the world. Yes. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> uh... And not any of the stories that I have told so far tonight. Well, I mean, um, you have told a bunch, so if you can't think of anything, like... Oh, I mean, I can make up a story. You want to... <laughs> I mean, I can just start rolling with a story. <laughs> if, you know, you want to hear of, like, Boldy Locks yes. and, and, the, <laughs> and the three werebears... All of you want to hear that story? I can throw that one down. Let's uh, do it. <laughs> but but nobody wants to hear about Boldy Locks in this day and age. Uh, let's see. What is a good story that's quick and not boring? Uh, I will. Oh, well, okay. There was a time. I'll tell you. I'll tell you about the time uh, uh, Burt Reynolds uh, strangled, tried to strangle a monkey puppet that I was operating. Like legitimately, he lost his marbles. Uh, a buddy of my, a buddy of mine named Sean Daniels, who used to run Dad's Garage Theater, where Amber and I work, uh, uh, he, he uh, got the gig of like hosting the Georgia Independent Film Award ceremony, which was the kickoff to the. Uh, like the Atlanta Film Festival and nobody knew what any of these things were and so they hired Sean who was the head of dads and they said hey you want to we want you, you can do whatever you want you know we want we're trying to lighten the evening up uh, and not make it so boring so do whatever you want and Sean went I'm bringing a puppet which meant me and uh we brought this monkey puppet that I was using in the kid show at, uh, that we were doing at the time uh no preparation. We had, I had no idea what I was walking into. Uh, Sean had just sort of a list of things that we were going to introduce. I was sitting up there in this very classy stage at our Fox Theater. Turns out <laughs> we're honoring Burt Reynolds, uh, Ossie Davis, and Ruby D, which were a married couple, but uh, both actors and both brilliant, uh, and Parker Posey for their film work in Georgia. I don't know. Uh, as the monkey puppet, we had to justify a reason why there was a monkey on stage of this prestigious event with our snarky host. Uh, we said that the monkey was a studio exec uh, from Hollywood, and he was looking to book the next big thing. And he was so he was uh, lowering himself to come to, like, you know, uh, independent film festivals to see what was going on. That was the trope. And then I made fun of giant movies. Uh, and Burt Reynolds got pissed off at it and at me making fun of movies. And then, so no matter what we said, he thought we were making fun of movies and him. And so when he finally got up on stage to accept the award, he came over and he tried to rip the monkey puppet like apart. He tried to grab, like, both sides, part of his arms, like, rip his jaw apart. While my hand was in it, I was operating the puppet. Nobody could see me. I was ah. behind a thing. And Bert, so Burt Reynolds walks up on stage onto the to a monkey puppet and just starts trying to rip it apart. And he was so weak. He was old uh, at this point. He's just a weak, weak old man. Like, he couldn't do anything. He also made, 
an inhuman noise, like a, a screechy growl, unlike anything I'd ever heard in my life, because he was really trying to rip this thing from uh, apart. That I think I don't, he never acknowledged me either. Uh, and so I like, I kind of think maybe he thought the monkey was real. I'm not sure. <gasps> then oh. he, unsuccessful in ripping the monkey apart, goes to the microphone to accept the award, lays into me and my buddy Sean, lays into us. How dare we make fun of Hollywood? How dare we say something about Brad Pitt? How dare we do this? Do we know how much money his movies have made? Do we know how much money Brad Pitt makes? Do we, like, all this weird shit? And then he started spiraling off into, I did a movie here with uh, 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 Sally Field. Oh, I should never have let her go. She was my true love. Like, just started wandering in this fucking, like, old man babble until he then finally, like, went off, yelled at us some more and then went off stage. And then we had the rest of the show to do, uh, <laughs> which sucked. And then, like, afterwards, I mean, we fucking ran out of that building. Uh, I, I think the crowd wanted to kill us. It was pretty hilarious. Is this a true story? Yeah, this is all 100% true. The National Enquirer uh, did... They ran stats like we were doing radio and news interviews around the country for like a couple of weeks. Uh, the National Enquirer ran like uh, a Phineas J. Monkey versus Burt Reynolds as though a fight were coming up and like our fight stats and oh all kinds God. of shit as though. Yeah. And then a little story about what had happened and why we were going to fight. And it was really getting a lot of attention. And then uh, John Stewart and The Daily Show called, and they wanted us to get a copy of the tape because there was a news agency there. I got a copy of the tape, but then the board at the theater said, hey, let's stop now while we're ahead because this kind of thing at any minute could turn around on dad's garage and us and what we were doing and all that kind of stuff. And before we go take, take it to the next level, let's just stop. And so we stopped, which is fine. It's, yeah. it's, it's good where it lives now, but yes, yeah, a 100% true story. Holy shit. <laughs> that yeah, was crazy. pretty hilarious. Oh my god! This is way before Archer, like a decade before Archer. I feel like no. This was probably let's see. This, uh, this was around two thousand four, somewhere around two thousand four, two thousand three, maybe. Oh, two thousand three, something like that. That's terrifying! Burt Reynolds coming at you. Like oh that? yeah, it's pretty hilarious. Well, <laughs> I, you know, I I only saw him when he finally got to me because I was I was under this. <laughs> thing hiding behind a shelf uh, all i could see was me and the puppet and the, the air above me and uh <laughs> and then all of a sudden here he comes and i was like oh no oh my god he's got the puppet oh my god he's trying to rip it apart oh my god he's really weak and so i just like tucked the puppet down and brought him down and like held him and then Brent reynolds went to the podium and then just started yelling at sean <laughs> Yes. And he kind of yelled at me, too. He kept referencing, but I didn't put the monkey back up. It's <laughs> oh, <laughs> sure. pretty great. It's pretty great. That's terrifying. Just awful. Okay, My brush gonna... with Bert. Yeah, God, you should write a little memoir on that. Uh, <laughs> you know what? That, that actually, it was the Dad's Garage 25th anniversary uh, uh, this year. And uh, they published a little book, and I actually wrote that story in the book oh. for the book. So it, it it just went out in print this year. That's awesome. <laughs> That's so cool. Okay, do you want to play a game? Sure, yeah, let's do it. Thank you for that story. That was a really like freaking crazy yeah. weird story. Yeah, hilarious. Burt Reynolds funny. attacked a monkey puppet story. I'm sorry you were involved in that. Oh, I'm not. It's a brilliant story. Why Why would I ever be sorry about it? Don't be sorry. True, true, true. Okay, so... <laughs> it's hilarious. 
<laughs> this game is called Wrong Answers Only. Um, and basically, I give you a completely, really terribly incorrect wrong answer to a movie title. Um, you can play it with like songs and stuff, but I chose movies because sure, I know right on. And, so, and I'm only giving you the wrong answer. Is that correct? no? I'm giving, I'm giving you the wrong answer, and you gotta guess the right answer. Oh, okay, gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Near meetings of the fifth type. Near meetings of the fifth type? Yes. Like close Home. encounters of the third kind? Yes, yes. Yeah. Okay. Courageous liver. Uh, courageous liver. Uh, courageous <laughs> liver? Like the, totally like, wrong. The, like the organ? Like the, the internal organ liver? Uh, brave heart. Yes. <laughs> um, the king of the bracelets. <laughs> the king of the bracelets? Is that what you said to me? Yes. Uh, <laughs> there would be, uh, wait, it's not Royal Tenant Bombs. Uh, the king of the bracelets. Uh, this one is yes you do okay uh, let's pass and we'll come back around to it okay live soft uh, die hard <laughs> um specter killers ghostbusters enduring solar rays of the pristine brain uh endless uh, uh, spotless whatever the yeah. fuck that sunshine of the endless spotless mind whatever the cock Charlie Kaufman yeah. movie that was Eternal Sunshine of the something Eternal oh. what of the spotless something was it Eternal Sunshine of the spotless one is that right. what it is yeah, yeah right <laughs> what, a, um, what a terrible title what a terrible title it is an awful like absolutely um, awful title it's not smooth at all no yeah everybody just calls yeah. it like Eternal Sunshine right isn't that what everybody right. just narrowed yeah. that thing down to yeah. Uh, somebody, you ready for the next somebody texted me Lord of the Rings, and I don't know what that means. Oh, they that's what it was, Lord of the Rings. <laughs> they were giving you the answer. Yes, that's it. Oh, King of the Bracelets. <laughs> gotcha, gotcha, gotcha. Lord of the Rings. Come on, I'm not, I'm not super witty. I'm doing Come what on, I can. Man. Uh, okay, the customary accused. The customary accused? Yep. Is that what you said? That's what I said. I said what I said. <laughs> customary accused. The. Oh, man. I don't bad. know. Pass. Okay. Somebody might send you the answer. <laughs> I'll come back to it. I'll come back to it. The realm retaliates. The Empire Strikes Back. Yes. Two drove under the robin's home. One flew over the cuckoo's nest. You just you just saying opposites. <laughs> You're still having trouble with a few of them. Give well, me a break. What's the one? What is the one that I didn't get? Uh the customary accused. The customary accused? It's not opposites. That's synonyms. <laughs> customary accused. I really I, I keep going. All right. Robbers of the missing biblical artifact. That's right. It's the lost ark. It is. And that was the last one I had. So. Okay. Wait. Okay. So. Something of the accused. What is it? The customary accused. The customary accused. The the pelican brief. Nope. I know it's not the pelican brief. No. Uh, <laughs> Die Hard with a Vengeance. Uh, Flash Gordon. You were. 
Clash of the Titans. Uh-uh. Uh, what is it? Something. The Accused. I really have no idea. The Usual Suspects. Oh my God. Suspect. Look. A suspect isn't accused yet. They're just a suspect. Wow. Why are you blasting me like that? <laughs> I'm just saying. No, that was very good. I mean, I only missed one. But yeah, that's not too bad. <laughs> no, you did great. And you missed the one that was like really shifty and shady and I didn't do a great job at it. So we uh, want to be Yeah. I mean, no. It was, yeah, we were fine. What you did was fine. I just, uh, yeah, it was, you know. There's a lot going up here all the time anyway. So if I'm racing for, if I'm trying to like put puzzles together. That's funny. Yeah, it's going to be tough. Thank you so much for doing this. Where can people find you if they want to follow you or see your stuff that you make? Right here. It's all right here on Instagram. This is really the only social media I pay any attention to. You have a YouTube though, right? I do, but there's nothing there right now over on Poop and Burst. So, I mean, there's stuff there, but there's, there hasn't been new content in a very long time. But it's please, go to... watch things on, on Poop and Burst. P-U-P-P-E-N-W-U-R-S-T. But umlauts are over those U's. And it's under Lucky Yates, right? No, it's under Poop and Burst. There's nothing Stop. under the Lucky Yates. Uh, really? YouTube channel. There's okay, a channel, so, but there's nothing there. YouTube under Poop and Burst and Instagram right here, Lucky Instagram, Eight. Lucky Eight, yeah. You don't do Twitter? I'm the, I, there's a, I have an account there, but I don't do anything there. It's a screaming nightmare hellscape. It is. It is. It's crazy. Yeah, terrible. Well, thank you so, so yeah, much. Yeah, you bet. Thanks for having me. This has been a delight. Oh, thank you. Uh, you guys check him out. He's hilarious. He does almost nightly stuff on That's night his... church. Yes, night church Sunday. That's Black my favorite. Song. Yes. Uh, yeah. So thank you, and thank you guys for watching. Good night. Bye. Bye.